Hi folks, this is the next part of our study about the Word of God in your life and it's good to see you. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day and for your grace and your love. And dear God, we praise you and thank you for this day. And Lord, we just pray for these words that you bless them in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So I want to ask a question and that question is this. Why have you come to listen to this video? Have you become come because you want to mock? Have you come because you think what your parents believe is silly and you thought you'd listen to a preacher and, and laugh at the preacher? And maybe some of you think, well, the Bible's boring, the Bible's just not true. But I just want to ask a question. How do you know it's boring? How do you know that it's not true? Have you really studied the Bible in depth? As the Bereans, as I said before, the Bereans in the passage of Acts chapter 17 verse 11 and 12 were people who studied the word of God. Jerome, uh, one of the great uh, scholars of the ancient world, in, said, Ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. So you might think the Bible's boring and you might think that Christianity is not true, the Bible's not true. But if you are ignorant of the Bible, you're ignorant of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who changed this world in its history like nobody has ever changed it. So, ignorance of the Bible means you're ignorant of the most important person in history. If we turn to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14, 2 Timothy 2 Timothy 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 14 to 17 it says but you must continue in the things which you have learned this is Paul to Timothy but you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of knowing from whom you have learned them and that from childhood you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus all scripture is profitable by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. You know, some of you young people are probably smirking and going, Jay, <laughs> Jay, the Bible is just so irrelevant, man. Listen, if you spend five hours watching porn, it'll bring you down. You spend five hours in this Bible and it'll make you pure. Alright? There's your relevance, my friend. That's, the, that's why the Bible is relevant. It changes people's lives. Okay? It is the Word of God. It will make you wise to salvation. And, you know, you, you might say, well, Jay, I've got issues about science and the Bible. I've got issues about this. I've got issues about that with the Bible. But the Bible is principally a book of redemption. From beginning, right at Genesis, when Adam and Eve fell, God put skins on Adam and Eve, and God was prophesying, look, you need a covering. And Jesus was going to be the covering that we needed, the blood of Christ. So right at the beginning of Genesis, it's called Proto-Evangelist, right at the beginning was a prophecy of Christ. And the whole Bible, if you look at the story of Noah, you think, oh, that story is just crazy. But if you look at it, God gives a rainbow and he gives a covenant that he will never bring a flood again. But there's a, there's a promise there that he's going to bless the world. But in a way, that, in a way that's not going to be a, a judgment like it was. In other words, there was a prophecy that the Messiah is going to come. And right through the whole scripture, there's these prophecies of the Messiah will come. And Christ came and died. In other words, the Bible is a is a story about the of Christ it's a book of redemption okay and if you get your mind around that that will help you with a lot of your intellectual questions because the first question you need to ask yourself what is the Bible about and the Bible is about the story of God's redemption for humanity and everything in the Bible is connected to that story okay if you turn to Acts chapter 8 26 Acts chapter 8 
verse 26 to 36. Now an angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise and go towards the south along the road which goes down to Jerusalem to Gaza. This is the desert. So he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority, under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had charge of all her treasury, and had come to Jerusalem to worship, was returning, and sitting in his chariot, he was reading Isaiah the prophet. And the spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah, and said, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scriptures which he read was this, He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth, and in his humiliation his justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this, of himself or of some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning at the scripture, preached Jesus to him. Now as they went down to the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him. So basically this eunuch, this Ethiopian um, guy, was reading uh, the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 53. And the evangelist was told by God, Philip was told by God to go and see and talk to this Ethiopian to explain the scriptures. But you notice something, the Ethiopian was reading the scriptures. He was, he was honest and honestly trying to find out what the scriptures meant. Okay. And if you go to the Bible wanting to pick holes in it, you'll find holes in it. You know, if I if I if I want to get to know you as your friend, and I want to think about the good points of you, I can do that. But if I don't want to be your friend, and I think, well, I don't want to be that person's friend, so I'll think of the bad things about that person. I can I can home in on the bad things, and and find bad points in your life and reject you. It, it's up to me what the way I come to you. You're just a perfectly ordinary person. But yeah, I'm coming judging you. Okay? And that's the same with the Bible. If you go with an attitude being critical and say, Oh, it's got faults. You're going to find faults. I don't believe there are faults in the Bible. But I'm going to say, if you come with that attitude, then you're going to, that's what you're going to get. But if you come with an open heart, sincere open heart, like the Ethiopian eunuch, and say, Okay, alright, I'll just read the Bible with an open heart and find out what it means, find out what it's saying then you're going to find out what the truth is. You know, many are laughing at Christianity. They think that they've rejected Christianity. But you know something? Most of you who've laughed at Christianity, most of you who reject Christianity, most of you don't really know what Christianity is all about. That's the truth. You're rejecting something out of ignorance. You might say, well, Jay, I've read the Bible a lot. You might say... Jay, I know a lot because I came from a Christian family. Yeah, but here's the question. Have you really, really, with an open heart, really tried to find out what the scriptures have been saying? Or was you reacting to your mum and dad who may be ramming down religion down your throat and you reacted against them? Maybe it's time now to look at things in a more objective way. If you turn to Luke chapter 18... Luke chapter 18, verse 15 and 17. He says, Then they also brought infants to him that he might touch them. When the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them to him and said, Let the little children come to me, and do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly I say to you, Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter into it. And the Lord is teaching you there is, if you really want to know God, you've got to come as a child. 
you've got to come humbly and I've seen this a lot people are proud people don't want to bow the knee to God you know a lot of reasons why many of you are rejecting God is because you're proud because you think you're clever you may have got some O level or A level you think you may think you're smart at school and college or at university and you're proud and you think you're smart and you've got it all sussed and the Bible's just laughable and all the rest of it but really it's all about you you're the king you're clever and and Christ is saying well you never God how hide the truth from you because God's not going to reveal himself to proud arrogant people and and you know something for those who think they're clever and they know a lot listen do you know something the people who know the most are often the most humblest because they know even though they know a lot there's still so much more to learn you see the more you learn the more you realize there's more to learn and it's ignorant people who think they're clever and they know it all those are real ignorant people because they don't they don't really know what real learning is a person who's really learned a real scholar uh, someone who really knows their subject you'll find that they're often very humble people because they know that there's so much more to learn okay so we've got to come with a, a humble attitude and, and it's a good attitude to have anyway to come and, and always be ready to to receive and listen from anybody and, and think about what they're saying especially the Bible um, you know I don't agree with Islam but if a Muslim talks to me you know and, and wants to share something with me then wisdom says well okay I'll you know I'll listen but we've got to test it when we've heard and we test it with truth and the way we find truth is by studying the Bible that's how we find out what is true and false but we're never going to do that if we're proud Proverbs chapter 1 5 and often these debates between atheists and Christians and, and debates often it, it's about pride wanting to show the other person they're wrong or wanting to win an argument or whatever but at the end of the day it's about truth and we're never going to find truth unless we have a sincere humble attitude especially to the Bible Proverbs chapter 1 verse 5 says a wise man will hear an increase in learning so I'm just asking especially young people today you've got a lot to say for yourself you've said a lot of this to your mum and dad because maybe they've tried to ram religion down your throat and you've been giving them a lot of earache and saying I don't agree with it or whatever but wisdom says listen listen to the Bible hear what it's saying feel the heart of the Bible the beat of the Bible the soul of the Bible what is the soul of the Bible what is the heart of the Bible listen to it but are you going to listen if you're not willing to study alright thank you for listening